Hi, future editing Juvie here. Before we get into the video, I just want to say I apologize for the sound quality. The microphone for, unfortunately didn't pick up the audio, so I had to use the onboard microphone and everything. Um, I hope that's okay. I hope you still enjoy. Stick around to the end to hear some fun facts about the Brandon Lee Crow movie and some deleted scenes. But uh, yeah, I wanted to pop in and say that. On to the video. Okay. Before we get into the Crow trailer thoughts and everything, I'm going to get some stuff out of the way already. Because I feel like I'm going to upset some people in this. Now, I've seen kind of like three different categories of fans that are like fall into this the thoughts of the remake. There's people that think that because they're goth, that they have more of like a hold or a claim to what the crow is, at least the Brandon Lee movie. There's people who think because they're emo, this is the exact same thing as the goth people. It's that they have more of a claim to be a fan than other people. And then there's people that I've seen that they're, it seems like they're not really a fan of the movie or whatever have you. They're just a fan of Brandon Lee, but, or at least his portrayal in that movie. And now I'm not going to be the one to say like, you know, oh, you can't be a fan of this or you're not allowed to be a fan of that. Like I've seen those people doing, but I am going to say just because you're goth or emo or whatever, just because you've chosen to dress a certain way or whatever have you, doesn't mean you have more of a claim to be a fan of a certain franchise, a character, a portrayal, whatever. Now, here's the thing. I have multiple Crow action figures. I have, even to the point where I actually have a little Lego figure of Eric Draven. I've read the comics, I've seen every movie, even the Wicked Prayer one, let's move on from that though. The thing is, just because like, I am a huge fan of it, I own the graphic novels and everything, I'm not like gonna sit here and be like, oh, I'm more of a fan than you are kind of thing. Because here's the thing, everybody has like their own right to be a fan or to enjoy something. I don't care if you are a super fan, if you're a, just a, a fan of like the movie, but to gatekeep a certain franchise, a character, a whatever, just because you are goth, because you're emo, because you make Instagram videos all day about Brandon Lee in that movie, doesn't mean that you are now above everybody else. Okay, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's move on. Now, the first thing that I thought when I was watching this trailer was Bill Skarsgård's look reminds me, and I know some people aren't even going to know what I'm talking about, or very few people will. Either way, Bill, Skarsgård, Bill Skarsgård's look reminds me a bit of Michael's look on the cover of Wild Justice, which I thought was actually really cool, to be honest. Now, in the comics, Eric actually does it. Eric sees the crow but nobody else does. And his like immortality and all that stuff isn't tied to the crow. That was something that they only did in the movies. That, that, that is purely a movie plot device. I'm interested to see if they're gonna include that in this one, but here's something that I really actually like, at least from the trailer. It seems like they're leaning into that paranormal aspect of it. Because here's the thing. This is a story about a man and his fiance that were murdered and he comes back from the dead and is able to heal his body. You can shoot him. You can stab him. You can set him on fire. You can throw him off a building. He will regenerate. That is some paranormal aspect type stuff. And I actually like that they seem to be leaning into that where you see like the land of the dead and him kind of being in a way like baptized in blood, kind of literally. Now, I know a lot of people, it's like, oh, there's there's only one crow, da, 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 da. There's not. In the graphic novels, in the actual just like novels that were written, there's not just one crow. 
could you make the argument that maybe this would have worked better if they just did that where it's like here's a different this this isn't eric draven and shelly this is a different person maybe i say maybe because there's a lot of people honestly like that haven't seen the original crow so this could be pretty much like this generation's like an adaptation of the crow are some people going to be upset about that because he doesn't look the way that they want him to or that like it looks more like what people think is like a soundcloud rapper or whatever have you yeah but this is it's the internet and it, nowadays people are upset about anything they want to be upset about that's and they'll let you know but here's the thing the crow did not start with the brandon lee film it started with the James O'Barr comic, and Brandon Lee doesn't look like the comic Eric Draven either. Things change, things evolve. What looked cool in the 80s might not be the same in the 90s, and what looked cool in the 90s might not work today. It happens. Things, things evolve, things adapt over time, and I think this movie is kind of going for that kind of uh, that aspect. And I, and I know some people, some people have mentioned the whole like face tattoo thing and it's kind of like whatever. And yeah, I might be biased. I'll admit it. But I've also seen a lot of comments of people are replying to it where it's like face tattoos aren't just for like, like rappers or gang members or whatever. Fill in the blank. There are tons of people nowadays that have face tattoos. It's just like, it's not a thing anymore. Another thing in the trailer that I really liked, one, the fight scenes looked super good. And here, like, I know some people are like, oh, it's too violent. <sighs> Again, in the original comic, not so much the Brandon Lee film, but the original comic, it's a violent comic. People get decapitated. People get like brutally murdered. It's not just like, you know, someone got shot in like, the femur or whatever and gets like stabbed with all the heroin needles or whatever which i guess to an extent is pretty violent or gets like tossed out of a window kind of thing like people get killed in brutal and vicious ways in that original comic in this movie they are leaning into that violent aspect of the the story as well which is honestly it's something that i really like because we're gonna see how you know when someone's pushed to like this type of limit and this type of situation, how like violent and how vicious and everything, those feelings are going to cause them to react and to treat people. There's something in the trailer that I absolutely love. Now, if you know that you have powers and you could very easily just regenerate and heal yourself and there's someone behind you trying to wrestle like a sword or a gun away from you, like they're behind you and you got it in front of you like this, what would you do? We'll give you a second. If anybody said you would shoot through yourself to kill them, you, yeah, you right. Cause that, like, I saw that moment in the trailer and I thought it was so it, it, it was so cool, but it also makes sense. Like, you are out for revenge and everything. You now know your limits in a way. And it's like, I'm just going to shoot through myself and I'm going to take you out. And it, like, ah, I love it. Now, am I excited for this movie? Yes. But am I cautiously excited about the movie? Yes. I love Bill Skarsgård. He has shown that like he he is an awesome actor. You put him in a role and he's going to knock it out of the park. Whether it's Pennywise, whether it's Castle Rock. Um oh, what was I can't remember the one I saw him in recently. Um but he's got another one coming out called Boy Kills World and like that even looks really good. So like I think Bill Skarsgård is one of those actors that like you might not like the movie as like a whole but you'll like him in that movie. So honestly, I think regardless of how like the movie as like a, f a finished product turns out, I think Bill Skarsgård is going to do like his role like really really well. I think he's going to do something that's kind of different than like what most people are maybe like used to seeing him in 
And honestly, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a fan of him and I'm a fan of The Crow, but I'm excited to see what he does with the role. And I'm excited to see a new adaptation of it. I, I, I want to see what this generation's Crow looks like. And I honestly, I just hope what, that what we get is like what the director wanted because... You know, City of Angels, you find out a lot of the stuff that got cut because the studio was interfering, and it's like, fuck, like, it would have been such a cool movie. Do I still enjoy it for what it is? Yeah. But knowing what was cut out of it, it's like, oh, it makes it so much more like, why did you have to fuck with it? There was going to be a whole scene where, like, we see the afterlife kind of thing. If I remember correctly, it was going to be like pretty much Ash is driving down this road on the motorcycle and he sees Sarah like get, like fucking racing a horse like through a field in a way. Um, and it's like they're in this afterlife together kind of thing. And like, I want to say that she had the crow makeup on, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but ah, oh, there's so many cool things that was cut out. And honestly, I love the crow salvation. Yes, was it a direct-to-video release kind of thing? Yeah, but when I saw it when I was a kid, one, the main character's name is Alex. It's pretty cool if your name's Alex. Just saying. But, like, I liked that story. Him being framed for the murder. The crow makeup, not actually being makeup, but scars from, like, how he was executed and stuff like that. Like... For, for all of its little flaws in the like here and there, the Crow Salvation, good movie. Um, the wicked, the wicked prayer one. So that is one of the novels that was written. Uh, I can't find anything nice to say about that movie. I'm sorry, but to sum this kind of all up, because I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Um. The Crow, like this new adaptation of The Crow, one, I'm excited to see a new adaptation and how things have changed. I love how they're, they seem to be leaning into the supernatural and paranormal like elements of this world and of this character. Like seeing the land of the dead, this like baptism in blood and everything. And like, seems to be like there's some kind of like, I don't know, like cult happening going on as well. So I'm excited to see what's going on with that. Another thing I like is the fact that they're not shying away from the violence. This is a violent world that we like. these characters are living in. Um, it's one of those things where, like I said, the comics, there are brutal and vicious deaths in it. This is something that, especially with action movies nowadays, I feel like we've evolved past the like camera cuts every like two seconds and everything and like not really showing blood. I feel like there has to be, there's like the action movies where it's kind of like, I know some people are going to get bugged when I say this, are kind of on like the Marvel cinematic universe kind of stuff, like where it's like, oh, okay. It's like Fast and Furious, like those type of fight scenes. But then you get ones that are more like, you know, like John Wick or The Beekeeper recently. And it they do show blood. They do show more violence. They have that visceral reaction, like when you watch them kind of thing. And I like that they're doing that in this. So I don't oh, hold on. Okay, yeah, we're good. So I don't know. I, I know people are already hating on it. People already hated on the it remakes that they did. People name anything. People are gonna be upset about it or they're gonna have something to say about it. You know, that's just that's how the internet works, and I feel like that's how a lot of people work nowadays. They don't like something based off a trailer or based off one picture and they fly off the handle about it and have to tell you all about how they don't like it. Wait, what's that? No, there's people who didn't like your movie either, even though it's like held in high regard and everything nowadays. No way. People were mad about Michael Keaton playing Batman as well. No. So listen, I don't know if you don't like it or you're upset about it or whatever. I mean, you're allowed you're allowed to have your opinion, but I just, there there's a lot of reasons as to why people might enjoy this movie or this adaptation and everything. And I just I don't know. 
I guess in a way I wanted to make the video to get my thoughts out, but to also like, I don't know, just mention to people like it's not worth getting mad and like trying to always argue or fight with someone just because they like something different than you do. Um, I don't know. It's just, I think it's all gotten a little bit silly with like opinions having to be an extreme negative or an extreme positive, like especially on social media nowadays. Um, and again, honestly, like I said in the beginning of the video, I just, uh, just because you are goth or because you're emo or whatever, I just don't agree with like, now you get to be on a higher level of fandom when it comes to like the crow and stuff like that, because there's other people who can tell you pr pretty much everything about the franchise. That it's not just this one singular movie that they're a fan of. Um, so I don't know. Just don't be a dick. That's, that's it. Don't be a dick. Ooh, also, before I go, because I think a lot of people have already probably tuned out by now, Eric and Shelley's death in the Brandon Lee movie and in the original comic is actually, like, very different. Um, in the movie, they get murdered and everything in the apartment, and Eric is thrown out the window, and then other stuff happens to Shelley. In the comic, they actually, their car breaks down, and that's when they encounter, like, Tintin and Fun Boy and all those little goons kind of thing. So like, I don't know, I think for fans of like the comic and the original, like the original movie, like we've already seen changes to the adaptation and stuff like that. So I don't know, I mean, this one might kind of fall in the same. It'll still be a good movie or a good story for what they're doing with it. It's just gonna be a different adaptation. Also, Gabriel, that was a cat that Eric found. It wasn't actually his cat in the comics, if I remember correctly. So if you have watched through this video. I appreciate that. I really do. It means the world to me. Um, I have a feeling a lot of people didn't, but that's okay. That's okay. For those that actually stuck by uh, till the end, uh, here's a little uh, bonus crow factoids for you. In the Brandon Lee movie, there's actually some deleted scenes. I talked about it if you go and watch my Timu video when I first like did an order through them and got my little Lego Eric Draven. Um, one, they cut out an entire character named the Skull Cowboy, which would have been cool. It was like a, a pretty much like a crow and everything from like hundreds of years ago kind of thing. But when we see T-Bird and Fun Boy and everybody blowing up that arcade in the beginning, that was actually, that. there's more to that scene that was cut out. So one, it was actually going to start out with them tying a lady up in the arcade, at the same time, when Eric was walking through that back alley for the first time, like when he made it out of his grave and was making his way to his apartment. And when that explodes, Eric is actually in that back alley and the lady who was in the arcade stumbles out of the back door and kind of like bumps into Eric. And if I remember correctly, he has like a vision and stuff of like kind of what happened in the in that arcade before it ex like they blew it up. And as he walks away, he sees a poster for his former band, The Hangman's Joke. Um, and it's like he starts, in a way, he like he recognizes it, but like he doesn't understand what's going on at that time. So I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool how like from the beginning, they were actually, without knowing it, were going to be connected to Eric. And then eventually their paths individually cross with them. Um, but I, I don't know. I thought it, that would have been cool to see that connected, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. All right, fine hooligans. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I appreciate you watching the video. Like I've already said, uh, hopefully you stuck around and enjoyed the video. Always remember you are enough in this world. You are wanted and you are loved. It doesn't matter what you're going through. There is going to be someone else who feels the same way that you do. And it, it is struggling with some of the same stuff. So Never feel afraid to reach out. Stay undefeated against the bad days because so far, you're doing pretty good. And all my quiet kids, freaks, and weirdos, for the love of everybody, keep being weird. Thank you.